Hello team. The future work subsection is the focus of this episode's report writing quickie. The contents of today's lecture will focus on first explaining what the future work section is, then we'll look at some different examples of future work where we're hoping to identify some good practices as well as some common mistakes. Then we'll finish off the episode with some further resources. While future work isn't crucial as the discussion, it does help showcase you know what you're talking about. It's one of those points where when we are marking something, we know if someone is a real dived in deep into the subject, if their future work is very well detailed. And it also gives you a chance to kind of flex your critical analysis muscles. And if you've thought about it before writing, it can be rather simple to write. After all, it's just a collection of kind of loose ends throughout your, your document. Whether you just have uncovered something interesting, not took it forward in your report, remember it, come back to this point in your future work. This can include literature you come across, ideas for your methodology which you don't want to use, and unusual trends in your results and more. This is where the scope paragraph discussed in the introduction episode can help out Here's an example of the marking rubric for a future work section. From this rubric, you can see criteria calls for a detailed plan for future work, along with an extension of the project's conversation. This means you're providing some level of detail, and it's not a simple throwaway comment. An extended the project's conversation means you've developed the report's work with something of merit. Moving now on to our examples, where we can see this marking rubric at play. There isn't much written in this poor example, but there's certainly a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. The first thing, I'm going to let you in on a wee secret, right? Seeing given more time, oh, it is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to marking. I despise these three words together. Given more time. Because I bet you 99%, actually, Deto, 99.9% .9 of all germs but 99.9% .9 of all time, when someone writes, given more time, the limiting factor is never time. It might be time when it came to you writing it last minute and you had to think of a sentence, but given more time is never. I've actually never seen it where given the time is a limiting factor. It could be your technical knowledge, it could be a lack of third party a lack of awareness of third party resources or it could just be your effort you could have just not wanted to do, go as far as doing something like that but it's never time make sure you're more critical and given better explanations of why that is your, what you're saying so make sure you're being more critical but it's not just that you have to be critical to get around this pet peeve of mine this allows you to thematically group ideas of future work by a reasoning too. So if you said it was your lack of technical knowledge and there was several ones, then you could just group them all together for technical knowledge. Greater technical knowledge may allow uh, for explanation in X, Y, Z. These are much better than saying, given more time. In the second point, we can see the exemplar has used the first person. I know it can be tempting, but avoid using first person, especially in the future work at all costs. We can never write in first person the scientific slash academic writing. It's very rare and we don't teach it and we don't use it in this field. And number three, the third point has got both good and uh, bad to it. First, we'll talk about the good. It's made a decent recommendation for future work. It's told us about Burp Suite. That's pretty good. That might be one we look at next time. It's a legitimate avenue for future work. But it could use a little bit more kind of detail. It doesn't say like what version or is there, some, is there a reason why we could use Burp Suite? Is it because it's popular? Is it because it's industry standard? Those kind of things would just kind of get us there along with it's missing a reference. We need a reference in there. On to a decent example. Unlike a poor example, this example gives sound reasoning or why we are suggesting this is future work. So they're not using given more time. And you can see this um, phrasing, a more expansive study may wish to, oh, that's right out of phrase bank. 
that's good. And then point two, this is rather minor, but in the future work should clarify what is meant by portable languages. If it's never appealed before, this kind of um, terminology, then make sure you kind of explain it. Because um, I don't know why, why, why is portable interesting here. I know that Go is a portable language, but could there be a difference between like Go and perhaps any alternatives? Overall, this would achieve a better mark than the poor example, um, but it wouldn't be super great, but it would be kind of getting towards a higher end marks. So unfortunately there isn't many resources, but future work is kind of one of those things you just kind of pick up tools of the trade kind of wise. There's no real signs to writing it. Maybe if you find any good ones yourself, you can always follow them on to me via email. However, good old reliable phrase bank does have a section for future work and I'd highly recommend it. Just gets the ball rolling. Rather than saying given more time, you're going to say a more expansive survey. And that's like the, um, what's it called? The Winnie the Pooh. Now the Winnie the Pooh and he gets like, the suit and he's like all fancy. That's, the, that's what you want to do. We've spoken about how this section isn't difficult and it's helped if you plan ahead for it in advance. Through examples, we've identified common mistakes and good practices which you can learn from. And although there isn't any good future work resources, there's always Phrase Bank which can help. And that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this episode and good luck.